Hello everyone, Alexander Flores here, and in this quick video, I'm going to show you how to use DynamoDB in a Lambda function. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new Lambda function. We're going to call this DynamoDB tutorial. We're going to use the latest version of Node, which is 8.10, and then our role is going to be Lambda default, which is the default role that we're given. We're going to go ahead and create the function. Okay, so now we're here with our Lambda function, and we want to go and edit our code inline. Alternatively, you could write the code on your local machine and then upload it through a zip file. However, I'm going to just write the code inline. So we have a basic Lambda function right here, and what I want to do above is I want to import AWS, just like that, and then I also want to create a new DynamoDB object. Now I'm going to use document client so it gives us access to use the native JSON syntax instead of having to convert it to the weird stuff that DynamoDB wants. Now I'm going to go ahead and pass in a region, which is US East 1. That's just where my database lives. If your database lives in a different region, which will create a database in a few moments. But if it does live in a different region, then obviously use that one instead. Now my goal here is going to be to store some information that is sent to our Lambda function into our database. So we're going to go ahead and delete this. So we're going to create a params constant. And then in here we're going to say the table name is going to be DynamoDB tutorial. So we're going to go ahead and create this table in a few moments, but for now, just enter a table name. Then we need item. Now in here is what information we're going to actually store. So one thing I'm going to do is because our goal here is to just simply store whatever is inside the event variable, then we can just simply say item is event. Alternatively, if you do want to add in your own custom items, you could say name Joe and other things like that right in here, just a normal JSON object. But for now, I'm just going to do this. Because we do need a unique ID, I'm going to make a random string here. Obviously, there are much better ways to do this, but just as a tutorial, I'll go ahead and use this. Then we could say params.item.id equals ID. And then we'll set the primary key to ID later on, whenever we go to actually create our database. Now we're going to want to await, we're actually going to want to return the response of this, await db.put, we're going to pass in params.promise. Okay, so now, just to recap, we're importing AWS and then creating a DynamoDB object. We're letting it know that our database lives on US East 1. And then we're also creating our normal Lambda function right here. Our goal with this is to store whatever's in the event into our database. So the params, you can add a lot more options if need be. There's a lot of different things you can add in depending on what method you're using. In this case, put, at its very default, just requires a table name to know where to store things, and then the item, which is what to store. And then we have this thing right here is just completely optional because we could use a UUID, for example, which is probably the better way to do this. But just as a demonstration, we're just spamming our keyboard. And then we're setting that ID as a property of item so that'll be stored to the database as well. And then this line right here is going to wait for the database to actually put the item into our table. So now before we actually run this, let's go over to DynamoDB. And we notice that we named this DynamoDB tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And we're gonna click on create table right here. Now our table name is DynamoDB tutorial and the ID will be ID. If you enter something like let's say test, then we have to have a property called test so in this case, we would name this test. So this is specifically named ID because that's what we're calling our primary key. So after we have that, we can go ahead and click on create. Now, while it's being created, we can scroll down and we see that the Amazon resource name or ARN is right here. We're gonna take note of this because we're gonna need that later. But it seems like our table is created. So if we go over to items, this is where all of our items will be displayed. Right now there's nothing because we just created it. So let's go to our function and let's save it. Now let's go ahead and create a test event. And remember the goal of this is to store whatever's in our event to our database. For this example, I'll just keep the default object right here. Let's click on create. Now let's go ahead and click on test. Now we get an error and all the code is fine, but we see on this error, we see that DynamoDB tutorial is not authorized to perform DynamoDB put item on resource. And then here we have a table. So this means that we don't actually have access to store to DynamoDB. 
Now, if you're testing on your local computer and you run your Lambda function just as a normal function, then this should work if you have your AWS credentials set up correctly, which I'll cover in a different tutorial. A link to that would be in the description once it's uploaded. However, for now, we're going to just configure our permissions using IAM. So we can go ahead and go to policies. Now we have two things here. We have policies and we have roles. Policies are individual permissions. Roles are things that hold multiple permissions and we assign a role to a Lambda function. So if we wanted our Lambda function, for example, to be able to put item like we have right now with this, but we also wanted it to have a get item so it was able to read from the database. Then we could create two policies, one for each, put item and get item, and then you could attach them both to a role and put that role in the Lambda function and then it would work. So in this exact case, I'm simply going to create a policy for put item and then attach that to a role and attach that role to the Lambda function and that'll tell AWS that this Lambda function does have the correct permissions in order to store things to the database. So let's go ahead and create a policy. Now for the service, we can simply type in Dynamo and it'll show us DynamoDB right here. Select this. So we can have our policies gain access to multiple permissions. However, in this exact case, we're just going to be storing put item to this policy. Then we go over to resources and then you choose actions that require the table resource. So it needs to know what table we're going to be putting items to. So if we click on that, we see this right here. We have to click on add ARN and that's something that we saw right over here. In Dynamo, we go to overview. We scroll down to the bottom. We see the Amazon resource name right here. And this is just a unique identifier that every single AWS item will have. So it understands what is what. So now we go over and we paste this in here. And if you copy the right thing correctly, then you should see these auto filled. Then we can click on add. Now we can go to review policy. Now I'm going to name this put item dynamo db tutorial. You can add a description if you want and then click on create policy. So it tells us a policy has been created. However, there's only halfway there. We now have to go over to roles and attach this policy to a role. So roles can hold multiple policies, but in this exact case, we're just going to create one that holds that single policy that we just created. So click on create role right here. Now we need to tell us what service will use this role. We want to select Lambda and then click on permissions. Now we get to select as many policies as we want. To make it easier, you can click on the policy type for the filter and then click on customer managed. And this will show you all the policies that you've created. You can search also, but one thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll down and we see right here, put item DynamoDB tutorial. I'm just going to simply select that and then I'm going to click on review. Now the role name, I like to always call these the same exact thing as my Lambda function just to make it consistent. So I'm going to copy this and I paste this here. I'll leave the description as default and then I'll click on create role. Okay, so now the role has been created. So now we go over to our Lambda function and we would edit it down here under existing role. So here we have this drop down here. However, it's not going to be displayed here because we have to actually refresh. So after we refreshed, we can click on this again and we see DynamoDB tutorial right here. Let's click on that and then let's click on save. Okay, so after we've saved it, we will now want to click on test and we see that this succeeded. We see an empty object here, which is what DynamoDB returns. If there was an error, then it would return the error. Then if we go over to DynamoDB and we go to items and we refresh right here, we see we now have this. So our ID is the random spam characters I added. And then this is what was in our test for our Lambda function. So obviously you can store whatever you want in DynamoDB. However, one thing I should note real quick is what an error would look like. So if I go down here and I change this to tutorial without the ending L, then I click on save. If we scroll up and we test this again, it's now going to send us an object that has an error. So we see that it's not authorized on this table right here without the error, without the L. So it doesn't know that it doesn't exist. It just says it's not authorized. So if you are getting a not authorized right here, then you might want to also make sure that you're spelt it right. So if you scroll down and we add the L back, of course, it'll work again. So that's pretty much it for this video. It's a very basic example of how to use AWS and DynamoDB to put information into DynamoDB. If you have any questions or any requests for very specific tutorials, please leave a comment down below. I'll make sure to read all of them and reply to all of them. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Thanks for watching.